What's up guys, Emma is back in the game, so welcome to a new episode of Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. Okay, so we are Wiggins right now and we're following a strange and mysterious man. And we can't be seen. That's really important. So... Let's check what he's up, up about. Or what he's up to. <laughs> wow, a lot of expensive stuff. Definitely. Coat of arms. It might help Mr. Holmes. I'll make a drawing of it. That might help Mr. Holmes. It's, it's too dangerous to enter. Ah, come on, don't be such a pussy. I can't see what's inside. Oh, everything's covered up, okay. So, okay, here's nothing else. Unfortunately, so we only have the coat of arms. That's not much, to be honest. Oh, there's another window. I can't see what's inside. Ah, fuck. Should have known. Anything in this windows? Ah, it's too far away. Ah, there he is. Do only two people live here? I wish one was me. Who wouldn't? Bags of food. I like this ass. <laughs> Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. We're not getting caught. It's too dangerous to enter. Ah, come on. Locked. Yep, it's locked, so let's take the same route out that we took in over the wall. Wiggins' tale was quite unusual. What do you make of what he found, Holmes? Examine the item brought by Wiggins. Holmes, we need to help poor Tom. Yes, I know. Where is it? My analysis table. It's useful. Um. Where is that what he brought us? Uh. Ah, maybe we should... I just wanted to say maybe we should check the archives, but okay then. Um Okay. Where is it? I mean, are you serious? Oh, there it is. I'm an idiot. Wiggins did a good job. He definitely did. So let's check this and we have to search the archives for it. The drawing of the coat of arms made by Wiggins. Okay, so newspapers now. Encyclopedias. Um, history maybe. Nope. Art and architecture. That's not the one I need. That's not the one I need. I have no freaking idea. Newspapers I don't have a year to search. Research. Ah, marks and symbols. The royal potato cans. Not the <laughs> but the head potatoes. English coat of arms. Ha! <laughs> the coat of arms of the Marsh family. Nowadays, the representative of this family is Lord Edward Marsh, the well-known benefactor... The well-known benefactor. He provides the poor people of Whitechapel with provisions, warm clothes, etc. Lord Marsh is also renowned as a co-founder of the special education program, which allows poor people the opportunity of an education. Lord Marsh resides at Three Mainsbury Road, London. Here it is. So this man could be Lord Marsh. Huh. A lord who hangs around in a public house. Let's pay a visit to Lord Marsh. We'll pretend that we're interested in his charitable activities. 
Mr. Holmes, you have a visitor. Oh, just ask him to wait. I'm afraid that won't be possible. This young lady refuses to wait for anything. What? Father! Caitlin! <laughs> Miss Caitlin's boarding school was flooded. Everyone was sent home. As if it could smell any mustier. <laughs> My word, how is it possible that you have grown up so fast? You'll be staying. Wherever will we put you? Holmes, I'll give her my room, of course. What do you have to say, Kate? You're on a new case. A respectable lady who's being blackmailed? Or is it a love story between a prince and a suffragist? However did you guess? You will tell me, won't you, Father? Of course. Maybe if danger arises, Watson's jealousy. Let's take this one. But you'll make Watson jealous. All right then. Have fun. I'll go and unpack. Will you help me, Mrs. Hudson? Oh, she <laughs> was looking delighted. It's wonderful to have Kate home. Brave Toby. <laughs> Best known. Brave Toby. I want to look through this fucking thing, but I can't. Uh, okay, this was completed, and now we want to pay him a visit. Yes, Marsh's house. Holmes, about Caitlin. Yes? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? To tell her what, Watson? Well, about her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes... You were responsible for the death of her father. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know. Watson, is that clear? Holmes. It won't and can't happen. Okay. Actually, I have to admit, I like the book that he's reading now during the loading screen. It's a book about practical motherhood and parent craft. This is so fucking awesome. Come in, please. And I can understand that you won't tell her, but he should, to be Let's honest. Let's get inside. To get to the point what, we're, what they were talking about a few seconds ago. Oh. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Let's have a look at him. Oh, he has red eyes. Feels unwell or lack of sleep. I think he... F f I don't know. I take the lack... I, I will take the lack of sleep for now. Gold ring. A man of wealth. Blanket. He's ill. He's hiding something. I think he... I don't know, let's say he's ill. Devon's vegetable painkiller. <laughs> Strong painkiller that make the he's ill a little bit more plausible. Notebook, Lord Marshall's personal assistant cooking recipe. Uh, yeah, his assistant I think. Um, where are you? Embroidered member of a hunting member of a hunting club. What was the second one? Let me read it. Embroidered motive. Okay. Ah, stethoscope, a physician. Um, I think he feels unwell. Let's go with this. Character portrait complete. Nice. I don't think... I, I don't know if it's correct, to be honest, just because it says it's complete. No idea. Since the thing about choosing between two options is new. That wasn't in the last games. So, Lord Marsh is a wealthy man who holds a high position in society, indicated by his expensive clothes and valuable gold ring. He has dedicated his life to helping the poor. He is ill, therefore he is covered with a blanket, despite the fact that it's quite warm inside the room. Am I interrupting? 
I hope we're not disturbing you. You are with your physician? Yes, this is Dr. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting the poor of London? Ah, uh, yes. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now, too, from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, clothing and books for the unfortunate. That is inspirational. Um, at my own humble level, I too try my best to support those in need. I thought perhaps that I could be of some assistance? I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. I recognize your face. It's curious. Your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with Whitechapel? Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? <laughs> Not that I am a drinker. But there, dressed as a working man, I can approach the other fellows to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special job? May I ask what you're referring to? Certainly. Since Lord Marsh began his special education program in 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And so, with or without education, we propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. Yes, indeed. In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, oh, Dr. Fisher makes it all sound so romantic. Let's close this topic. Okay, Marsh's disease. Is this the guy we were following as... as Wiggins? Really? The face looks different to me, to be honest. Forgive me, Lord Marsh. You're looking very pale. Might I offer Dr. Watson's assistance? That is kind of you. But I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. How long have you been like this, my lord? I'm fine, Dr. Watson. <laughs> Don't fuss. <laughs> it's only influenza. I'll be better in a few days. I can feel it already. The painkiller. In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, what do you mean? Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. Is that so? Lord Marsh believes that he can help all these poor people. I'm gratified by your interest in my charity. You're the first who has offered to help. Lord Marsh even helps hospitals. The London Hospital, okay. Where's all the stuff going to? I'm intrigued to? by the special education program. I've never seen so many provisions for the poor. And certainly not in a Lord's house. Distribute for paupers Whitechapel High Street, with London. The paupers of Whitechapel. What do we have here? Lord Marsh hunting with his friends. Ah, my dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. All in due time, my lord. Last year, three orphans were put through medical college. Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education program, a great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Last year... Thank there has to be anything else. Document with seal? What's that? Dear Lord Marsh, here is the list of selected participants for the special education program in October. It looks to be a very promising event. I'm looking forward to it. John Strobridge. I've seen this name before. It was on a missing persons poster. Right. Can't quite work it out. Do you have any ideas to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Oh, don't embarrass me, Mr. Holmes. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. 
<laughs> yes, the list would be longer than any of your short stories. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. Likewise, Mr. Holmes. They look so much like hipsters, both of them. Well, anyway. Uh, what are they doing with those people? They disappear after they apply for this special job. Humanitarian aid for an orphanage. Aid for the paupers of Lambeth. It's extremely honorable to devote one's whole life to assisting the poor. Thanks it is. For the food. It is, but not if people disappear because of it. Locked. Oh, locked. It's closed. Um, wow. What do we have here? Can I look at this? Oh, come on. I see that something is behind this. Well, okay. Um, I just saw that we can check our deduction, but I don't know what... What's the right button for this? To be honest. I really have no idea. Can I enter it from here? Dialogue. Special education program. Okay, let's talk to him again. Maybe we can find some more I'm out. I'm by your interest in my chair. Okay, no. <laughs> Obviously not. It could be that George has mentioned something about this to his son Tom. Ah, okay, we have to talk to Tom. How do I freaking open... Wait a second. Gameplay... Blah, 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 blah. What? Where are my key bindings? That's cool. Um. Okay. So I have trial and error. Oh! What button was the right one? I think it was C. No. No. Ah, B! Like, okay, B is it. So, what do we have here? The special job and then he's missing. What? Really? The club, no? The special education program. That's correct. What is this? Some of the facts may be interpreted differently. You can... Okay. <laughs> Like in the second game. Not connected. The special job mentioned by George Hurst is not connected with the special education program. George Hurst's special job and Lord Marsh's special education program are somehow connected. I think so, because after they apply for this, they going missing. Maybe he refused the special job, no? And then he went missing? The club? No? Okay. 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 Don't have anything else to connect to each other. So that means the next thing we have to do is to talk to the son to find out if he knows anything about it. So let's go to Hurst's house. What I have to admit that I really like in this game during the loading screen, I can open my textbook and the deduction board. That's really, really cool. So, let's Holmes, ask him about it real quick. Do you have any news about my father? Tom, Tom, not so fast. I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program. An education program? No, he only talked about a special job. What's this box, Tom? Oh, yeah. I just found it, Mr. Holmes. It was ever so well hidden. I've no idea why. Well done, my boy. 
It could prove very helpful. Okay, examine the box found by Tom. We will do this, but we will do this in the next episode. I really hope you liked this episode. If you did, hit the like button down below, leave me a comment, and then I will see you again in the next episode of Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter.